you can take your drone shots from this to this. The DJI Air 3S has a great camera on it, but if you want to get the best quality out of it, you need to color grade your footage. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to color grade D-Log M footage from the Air 3S in DaVinci Resolve. And I will be color grading D-Log M, but you can do something similar with normal color profile footage. You just won't have as much color grading flexibility. So here in DaVinci Resolve, I have a couple of clips from the Air 3S on the timeline that will color grade. And so to color grade them, first of all, we'll switch over into the color grading workspace by clicking on this little dot with a bunch of colored dots around it. And that will take us over to the color grading page. In the middle here, we have our viewer where we can look at the clips. And underneath we have our clip selector so we can switch between the different clips. And over here we have our LUTs. Over here we have our nodes panel. And then down here we have all of our different color grading tools. I'll explain what all of those do as we go through. But that is the basic layout. So for our first clip here, this is actually going to be a pretty simple grade. I'll just find a good frame to grade off of that is representative of the whole clip, which I would say would be somewhere right here in the middle. And the first thing we'll do is add our D-Log M conversion LUT. And to download this LUT, you can just go to DJI's website, go to the Air 3S page and go to downloads. And under software and drivers, you can download the .cube file. So we'll just find that LUT here in our DJI folder in the LUTs panel and click on that LUT and drag it over here onto the first node in our nodes panel. Now, a lot of people really get scared of nodes, but they're actually really simple. They're basically just like color grading adjustment layers. On each node or layer, I can add a lot or brighten or darken it, and I can just keep on layering adjustments one after the other. Obviously, this doesn't look good, but you get the idea. And as you can see, adding this a lot already just adds a lot of life and pomp to the image, takes it from a really flat and boring D-Log M shot to a much more contrasty, punchy, good looking shot. This already looks pretty good, but we can make it even better. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just bump up the shadows just a tiny little bit. To do that, we'll come down here to our primary wheels panel, come down to the shadows slider, click on the number next to shadows and drag it up just a little bit. We'll go for about 10 here. And if we undo and redo that, you can see that we've just boosted up the shadows a little bit so that they're not getting crushed down so much, which will come in handy when we add a bit more contrast later. So next we're gonna add a new node. You can do this either by right clicking on the first node, going to add node, and then clicking on add serial node, or you can just hit option or alt S on your keyboard to add another node with just one click. And now on the second node or second color adjustment layer, so to speak, we're going to add another LUT. These next couple of LUTs will help to give the shot more of a cinematic look. And all of these cinematic LUTs I'm going to be using are from my Flying Filmmaker LUT pack, which link to that is down in the description. If you're interested, it's also included in my Drone Color Pro color grading course, as well as my full drone filmmaking course. So we'll just browse around through these LUTs. And I think the one I want to add is this cold fog LUT. This is basically just going to add a little bit of contrast to the shot and if anything give it a little bit cooler tones make these greens a little bit greener instead of so yellow and I think that looks pretty good but we can still give it a bit more of those nice cinematic colors so we're again going to hit option s on the keyboard to add another node we'll come back over here to my flying filmmaker lot pack and grab our blue C lot and we'll drop it on the last node here and if we turn that off and back on you can see that we've just just pulled our colors into a bit more of a cinematic color palette. We've kind of got some teal colors going on in the sky here. We've pulled these warmer tones in the castle into a bit more of an orangish hue and all in all made the shot look just a bit more cool and cinematic. And so now if we look at our original clip and the clip that we have now color graded, you can see what a difference just some very quick and easy grades just with lots have done to take this shot from quite flat and boring and make it look very nice and cinematic. Now moving on to our next clip here, this one is going to be relatively easy as well, but it is slightly more complex because on the first clip we had a relatively balanced exposure throughout the shot, but on the second clip we have a brighter sky that we're going to need to deal with. 
So again, we're going to start off with our DLOG M log conversion lot. We'll just go to our DJI folder, grab our Air 3S DLOG M Turek 709 lot, drop it on our first node. And as you can see, that does add a bit of pop, a bit of saturation to the shot, but it is still very, very flat. So next we're going to add another node. Again, we can just hit option S or right click on this node, add another serial node. And on this node, I'm actually going to add a bit of a mask so that we can select either the ground or the sky and edit them separately. So to do that on our second node, we'll come over here to our window panel and I'm going to grab a gradient mask and this will put this little mask that we can drag around on the shot. I'll hit shift H on the keyboard and that will turn on our mask highlight and we can see exactly what we are selecting, whether we are selecting the sky or the ground and we'll go right about here. That looks pretty good. We just want to be right on the line between the sky and the ground. We want it to be a little bit feathered out so we don't have a super harsh transition and this looks pretty good. Now I do want to select the ground on this node instead of the sky so I'll just come down here to our window panel and find the selected mask with a red box around it and click on this little circle with a box around it to invert the mask and select the ground instead of the sky. Now, as you can see we're selecting a little bit much of the sky so I'm going to bring it down just a little bit and I think that looks pretty good. So now I'll hit shift H again to turn off our mask highlight and now I can edit the ground and it won't affect the sky at all. So first of all, we'll come down here to our primaries panel, grab the contrast and pull it up just a little bit. We don't wanna to go too over the top here. Next, we'll boost up our shadows just a little bit, maybe to around 20 and also pull down our highlights to around 20 just to preserve some of the dynamic range in the shadows and highlights here. Then we are going to grab our curves tool. This may look a little bit scary, but it's actually really, really simple. Basically, you can just put points on the line, push them up to brighten and down to darken. And if we put the point more toward the right, we affect the highlights more. And if we put it more toward the left, we affect the shadows more. So we are just going to kind of put our point right here in the middle, maybe a little bit toward the highlights. And then we'll add a second point toward the shadows and bring it down a little bit to add some more contrast. We will just sort of tweak the exact position of these points until we like what we are seeing. And it looks like I may have gotten a little bit carried away here. We don't want to add way, way too much contrast, but we do want it to pop nicely. And I'd say that looks pretty good. Now we also want to be able to edit the sky and we could do the same whole process again of adding another node and adding a mask to just the sky and all of that. But there's an even easier way to do that. And that is to just right click on the node go to add node and click on add outside node. This will basically select the opposite of whatever was selected on the previous node. So if on this node we selected the ground and we're just editing the ground, on the next node now we just have the sky selected and we're only editing the sky. And to add an outside node more efficiently, you can just hit Option or Alt S on your keyboard. So now we have a selection for the sky and now we can edit it. I'm gonna just put a point in the middle of my tone curve and bring it down a little bit to darken the sky. We don't wanna go too, too super aggressive here, but that looks pretty good. Just bringing the detail back a little bit in the sky. We can also come over here to our highlight slider, pull that down a little bit as well. Again, we don't wanna go too dark. We don't want the sky to be unnaturally dark, but I'd say that looks pretty good. And now to make the clouds in the sky pop a little bit more, maybe also bring out some detail in the river, we'll again add another node so that we can layer some more adjustments. And this time, instead of using our regular tone curve here, we are going to go over here a couple of tools to the hue versus luma curve. And this basically lets you select any color and change the brightness of just that one particular color. So in this case, we just want to darken the blues in the shot. So we will just click on our two blue dots down here at the bottom that will add some points on our line. And we'll just click on the point next to this mountain of data here in the blue range and pull down on it. And as you can see, we are darkening only the blue tones in the image. Now, obviously, if we go all the way down with this, this is gonna look super unnatural and fake, but if we just bring it down a little bit, it will darken those really bright blues. And if we turn it off and back on, you can see it's just helped the clouds in the sky to pop out a little bit as well as darken the river. And then for our very final node 
to bring this whole look together and give the shot that cinematic look and pop. We are going to add a final LUT. Again, this is from my Flying Filmmaker LUT pack, and this time we're going to use the cinematic warmth LUT. And so to add it, we're again going to hit Option S to add another node, find our LUT in the LUTs panel, and drag it over onto our final node. And if you want to adjust the strength of a LUT, you can just come over here into the key panel, make sure the node the LUT is on is selected, come down here to key output, and you can drag down the gain of that node to adjust its strength all the way between zero and one, or 0% and 100% strength. For this LUT, I think it looks pretty good. I'll bump it down just a tiny bit to maybe about 0.8. Turn it off and back on, I think that looks good. And so if we turn our whole grade off and back on, you can see that we've made an absolutely huge difference. We've taken the shot from being honestly quite boring to looking absolutely amazing. And even if we look at the difference between just applying the default DJI LUT and putting in the extra work to add in some more color grading, some more LUTs, some more masks to target different areas of the shot, you can see that that makes an absolutely massive difference in creating a cinematic shot that people will actually want to watch. So there you go, that is how to color grade D-Log M footage from the DJI Air 3S. If you'd like to learn more about how to color grade your drone shots, I put together an entire course called Drone Color Pro with over 25 lessons going through every single one of the tools that you need to understand in DaVinci Resolve to be able to color grade your drone shots. I show where all the tools are and what they do and how to put it all together as I go through color grading 15 of my favorite drone shots in real time so that you can see what my thought process is and exactly how I color grade. So if you're interested in learning more about how to color grade your drone shots, I'll put a link to that down in the description. And links to my Flying Filmmaker LUT pack and full drone filmmaking course will be down there as well. Otherwise, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe for more videos just like this, and we'll see you in the next one.